did you know that you can emboss with your Cricut machine? Yeah, that cool raised effect on paper. In today's tutorial, you will learn how to use the Cricut debossing tip with this envelope design. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go over what the definition of embossing is and the difference between emboss vs deboss. To emboss a material, it means to create a raised or uplifted effect. It is raised against the background. Meanwhile, debossing is the opposite. It is depressed or sunken into the surface of the material. See the difference between the two here. So basically, it's just a cooler, more unique way to add a little spice to your projects. Now keep in mind, if you were to deboss words or specific shapes, you would have to mirror the design, but we'll get into all of that later on in the video. This is what the deboss tool looks like. It has a small roller ball at the bottom with the numbers 21 at the tip. If you have the quick swap housing, you can switch out that tip with other quick swap tips like the engraving tip, scoring wheels, wavy blade, and more. So now that you know what embossing and debossing are, we can get started with the materials you will need for today's video. You will absolutely need the Cricut Maker or Cricut Maker 3. So only the Maker models, no Explore Airs or Joys, unfortunately. You'll also need the Quick Swap Housing and Debossing Tip, Fine Point Blade, the Standard Grip Mat or the Light Grip Mat, your Weeder and Spatula Tools, the Brayer Tool, Heavy Cardstock, mine is 100 pounds, envelopes, painters or frog tape, and this is optional, but an inkjet printer for print and cut. Embossing and debossing can get confusing with the amount of steps involved, so to make it easier for you, here's my little diagram I made with the exact order. If you are doing print and cut, say for an invitation, which will be my part two video, or you're doing an envelope with your address on it, that will be the first step. If not, you will skip to the second step, which is to cut the base layer with the fine point blade. The base does not get removed from the mat because then we will place our material above that layer and head to step three, which is to emboss with the debossing tip. So I'll leave this on the screen for you to screenshot and keep as a guide. But these are the exact steps to follow when you are embossing or debossing. Now let's learn how to emboss with the debossing tip, embossing an envelope. Head over to Cricut Design Space to make your design. To keep it simple and easy, I've seen this design on so many envelopes, so I wanted to recreate it. We'll click the text button and type both initials out. In this case, it's A and A. The font I'm using is a basic serif font similar to Baskerville or Times New Roman. Then I clicked shift and the key next to the bracket key to get that straight line. I'm not sure what it's called, but I will <laughs> insert a picture here. I then dragged that line in the middle of both of the initials and then aligned everything. So I lined the bottom of both initials, centered them with the line horizontally and vertically. Then once everything is aligned, you can unite your design and size it appropriately. This was about 1.5 inches for a five by seven on envelope. Now these next two steps are very, very important when debossing. The first step I learned to get a thicker, better emboss is creating an offset layer. Click the offset button on the top toolbar and change the size to 0.022. This size was perfect because it was not too small and not too big. And the second important step is to change that offset layer operation to deboss. So go to the top toolbar under operation where it says basic cut and hover down to deboss. Click it to change. Now this next tip is optional, but it has helped me save time with aligning my material to where it exactly needs to go on my Cricut mat. And this is called the TT method or the triangle tip method. So simply click the shapes button and select triangle or any shape, it really doesn't matter and then duplicate it. So now you have two triangles. You will highlight or select both triangles and center them so they're in the same position. Next, change the size of both triangles to as small as you can. This will be 0.01 inches by 0.009 inches. Then change the position of both of them to the top left corner of the mat. You can do this by clicking more at the top toolbar and adjusting both the X position and Y position to 0.25. Now finally, 
Make sure your design is in the exact spot you want it to be. You can do this by placing the envelope over the Cricut mat to see where you'll want it to cut. Then you will select one of the triangles along with the United Basic Cut Layer and click Attach. That way, when we click Make It, both the cut and the emboss layers will be in the exact same position so you don't have to keep remembering where you have to put it on the mat. You'll repeat the same step for the offset layer. So select the other triangle, select the offset layer, and click attach. Now before you click make it, you'll see on the right layers panel you should have two attached layers. One layer is the cut layer or known as the step two base layer and the other layer is the deboss layer or known as step three. Once you have those ready, you can proceed to the next step, getting the Cricut ready for your design. Again, I'm going to refer back to my handy dandy diagram since we're just embossing an envelope. We do not need to do any print then cut action, but if you do need to print then cut, you will learn this in the next video. So we'll proceed to the second step, cutting our base layer. This is where the heavy duty cardstock comes in handy. Be sure to click on the right layer. And this is why I kept it two different colors because you can tell on the left hand side, one will say basic, cut and the other will say deboss. We need to cut the base layer first, which is the basic cut mat. I made plenty of test cuts with this specific cardstock and I suggest you do the same before so you can see which material setting to use. I actually adjusted the material settings and power, but it's gonna be way too long for me to include this in this video. So it's going to be a future video tutorial. But if you are interested in hearing about this for the first time, please share that in the comments so I know that it is in high demand. Our material is set to my custom craft cardstock setting. And now we can prep our Cricut mat. Place your heavy cardstock down onto the Cricut mat and use your brayer tool to ensure that the material is firmly adhered to the mat. My mat is not as sticky as it used to be, so that's why we're using frog tape to tape the sides and make sure it doesn't move while the Cricut cuts our base layer. Then we'll feed it into the Cricut and it will start cutting. And voila, it cut our design perfectly. The next step is to weed the negative spaces, so carefully remove the back of the cardstock and the inside of the A's. This is why it's important to use a thick material like heavy cardstock because the thicker it is, the more noticeable the emboss will be. You can see how risen it is already if you look at it from the side. And the final step is to deboss. Add your material, in this case, it'll be our envelope to the Cricut mat. Again, this is why the TT method is so important because now I know the emboss will be even each time. Once it's positioned on the mat, I add some pieces of frog tape to secure it to the mat. Then please, please do not forget to switch out your blades before you start cutting. Swap out the fine point blade and add the quick swap housing and debossing tip to your Cricut. Then feed the mat into the Cricut and it will start embossing. It came out so good. I loved how the emboss looks on the envelope and it's such a great way to elevate your mail for invitations. And that's how you emboss one envelope. Now, if you wanted to make wedding invitations or emboss in bulk, from here, all you'd have to do is repeat the last step just using the debossing tip. If you have room, you actually could have cut two base layers so you could then emboss two envelopes at once. It will make the process much quicker, especially if you have 100 plus invites to send out. Then once you're done, all you do is take your spatula tool and carefully push the base layer off the mat. And that's how you successfully emboss an envelope. The next way we can emboss is by doing a print then cut project on an invitation like a save the date, which will be the next tutorial. So make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on to get notified about that video. Thank you for watching, happy crafting, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.